We turn now to CBS News correspondent Elizabeth Palmer, who is in Tehran and spoke exclusively Saturday with Iran's top diplomat, Foreign Minister Mohammad Javad Zarif. Liz? We were invited to the foreign ministry here in Tehran, where Dr. Zarif underlined that five other countries besides the U.S. had signed the Iranian nuclear deal. And no matter what the White House said or did, all five remain firmly committed to it. This is not a bilateral treaty between Iran and the United States. So whatever domestic politic, politicking he wants to do, uh, that's his business. You know, the United States is a permanent member of the Security Council. And if it's not going to uphold a resolution that not only it voted for, but it sponsored, then the credibility of the institution that the United States considers to be very important would be at stake. Nobody else would trust any U.S. administration to engage in any long-term negotiation because the length of any commitment, the duration of any commitment from now on with any U.S. administration would be the reminder of the term of that president. Are you thinking of any country in particular right now? No, I'm thinking of the entire international community. Not North Korea? Well, uh, including North Korea, but I believe the entire international community. You see, this, this administration is withdrawing from everything. Somebody called it withdrawal doctrine for this administration. It's withdrawing from NAFTA, it's withdrawing from Trans-Pacific Partnership, it's withdrawing from UNESCO, it's withdrawing from everything. So people cannot trust anymore the word of the United States. You see, in order to bring United States on board on many of these international agreements, a lot of people make a lot of concessions. Now nobody is going to make any concession to the United States because they know that the, the next U.S. president will come back and say it wasn't enough. We're not satisfied. Let us say that Donald Trump eventually does pull the U.S. out of the agreement unilaterally. Will you stay in with the Europeans, Russia and China, and make it work with them alone? If one party withdraws from the deal, particularly the United States, and starts, uh, in fact, violating the most important elements of the deal, then Iran will decide. So you, whether you're, you're not going to commit now to staying in if the U.S. pulls out? We have committed ourselves not to be the first party to withdraw from this deal. But that's it? Provided that our economic dividends that have been enshrined in this deal are respected and Iran continues to receive those dividends. Once Iran does not receive those dividends, then it would be a totally different situation. Secretary Rex Tillerson called around late in the day yesterday uh, to give various allies and world leaders a heads up about what was to come. Did he call you? No. I didn't expect him to. You didn't expect him to? No. Not even as a courtesy? Well, there's not much courtesy left in, in the way the United States treats the rest of the world. You are a partner with the United States and other countries in this nuclear deal now that implies a huge amount of diplomatic engagement. Why doesn't that give you the privilege to talk to the Secretary of State directly? Well, uh, I think that's a decision that the United States has you made. You did it with John Kerry. We, we certainly did, and it produced a lot of results. It produced a lot of positive results. It averted some rather nasty scenarios. Uh, but uh, this administration has decided to play uh, in a totally different uh, manner. Uh, and uh, I can assure you uh, that Iranian dignity and pride will not allow us to engage when mutual respect and equal footing are not respected by one party. Have you spoken to the Supreme Leader since President Trump's speech? No, it's been late last night since he spoke late last night, and we know his views about it. Uh, we have briefed uh, the leader about what he was going to say. Because what was his reaction? Pretty much everybody knew. Uh, he said, I expected it. 
So Although, there was a little bit of I told you so, because he had been against the deal from the beginning, and no, he, he has, has never, never been, trusted the United States. None Did of he us say, have, you see, I, I was right all along? None of us ever trusted the United States. This deal was not based on trust. It was based on mutual mistrust. And I think that was the strength of this deal. It's not something bad about the deal. It's the strength of the deal. But unfortunately, the way President Trump is handling it, it's widening the mistrust not only between Iran and the United States, but between the global community and the United States, where the U.S. is no longer not just unpredictable, but unreliable. Have you given up for the moment uh, on trying to establish better relations with the Trump administration to try and dial back the rhetoric? Uh, well, I believe the Trump administration uh, is closing its eyes on the realities of our region. And it's getting into a quagmire that would harm US national interests and would harm, because of the significance of the United States as a global player, will harm our region. We believe it would be important for the United States, for the Trump administration, to exercise a reset in its cognitive disorder with regard to our region. With such huge implications for everything from Iran's economy to its national security, you know that all eyes in the Iranian government are now fixed on the U.S. Congress. John? Liz Palmer for us in Tehran. Thanks, Liz.